Science. Hello and welcome to Probably Science. My name is Andy Wood. I'm Matt Kirshen. And I'm Jesse Case. And it's a special festive edition. Uh, you can't you can't tell, but we're all wearing hats. Uh, can we? Well, we'll introduce our guest, but I want to ask you about this festive. It's a whole different thing in England, isn't it? There's like a fe- I know just I know that because the baking show. There's like a holiday one, a Christmas one, and then a festive one. Oh, I uh, you know what yeah. I'm talking about? Yeah, let's like on, let's on, go on, with what? that. What? Okay, so uh, well, uh, we have a guest. Uh, the guest is great. I've known the guest since I'm 20, but he thought I was 21. Uh, and he's oh, still, he's still I didn't know that. I guess you both start. You both started like kind of in the south. Um, our new guest, uh, our guest, by the way, has a new uh, special out on Peacock right now called Number One. It's very funny. It's very funny. I've watched it. It is great. It's it's very very good. And the person speaking the words and being on the camera is Sean Patton. Hey, Sean. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for having me. It, it sounds very the way Jesse said. Known me since I was twenty, though he thought I was twenty-one. It's very suggestive. Yeah. That's oh, the- oh, no, <laughs> he, was playing, he was playing you. Yeah, no, right? it's just it's just funny now because we're all old. We're all super old. Uh, so it's it's uh, just one of those things where I'm like, man, it's depre- We've all been doing this way too long. This well, I know. I remember. I, I met. You, I, I remember where I met all three of you. I remember when I met you, Jesse, in New York. New York at at an open mic at the Comedy Cellar, which the, the open mic there does not hasn't existed there in over a decade, I think. No, and it was you had to pay yeah. like five dollars, and we were there with Amy Schumer, who like the next day, just like was headlining. But, you know what I mean? We were all at the I same think, yeah, level. like the next the, yeah, like the very next but day she, she was headlining the garden. The, yeah, the she did Madison Square Garden the next day. They were just yeah, like, yeah. You, like, because I remember afterwards, we, uh, you yeah. and I went out front for a cigarette. She was standing with us, and then a limo stopped and backed up and said, "You headline the garden, <laughs> right, and, right, 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 right." And we were like, "Which one of us? Which one of us three? And it was her. Um, I, I think, I think if one of us would have spoken up faster, it could have been us. But she was just more confident. <laughs> I know, no, she was, she was right <laughs> there. Someone just know? snapping their fingers. Someone get in the limo. Right? Yeah, people don't realize like that's New York, baby. It can happen yeah, anywhere. That's New York. <laughs> you yeah. gotta get a slice. You gotta get one. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> while you're getting a slice, a guy drives up and offers you God, the fucking God, the fucking yeah, no. God over here. You got <laughs> a book in the garden here. Yeah, yeah that's what they say. That's yeah. my book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I remember Matt. I met you in in Montreal. That's in, right. I want to say two thousand and ten. Eight. Eight. Two thousand eight. eight. Yeah. Right. Right. And I was terrified of you because uh, I used to just be horribly intimidated by British people until I <laughs> went and spent some time in England. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> you're just Americans with accents. Sorry. But, <laughs> and better healthcare. <laughs> Uh, um, but D- yeah. did you think I was going to like recolonize or something? No, I thought you were just going to any I, anything I said. I thought you were going to be like, well, that's not quite proper, then, isn't it? And then just kick it apart. <laughs> and everyone, feel... everyone, listen to what this man just said. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Listen to how stupid this southerner is. I thought. Listen to what he thought was a sentence. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And um, and Andy, I met you at the second annual Bridgetown Comedy Festival. Um, and this one, and this I remember very specifically because we'd only talked online previously. You had hit me up on Facebook, very kindly invited me to come to the festival. I had heard about it because it was year two. And I was like, hell yeah, I'm in. And I come to this festival all bouncy and full of energy like I normally am and saw you and was like, oh, there's Andy. I'm going to go bust his balls because we're internet friends. And you were in a state of full-blown festival running hell space <laughs> and we're immediately just like not now dude and i was like oh sorry i'll just go fuck off and get back that's portland baby tomorrow. that's yeah. portland that's portland <laughs> you were you were you were actually terrified the first time i don't remember oh man i, I i'm sorry i mean so yeah, Andy and i had the exact the, yeah. like the exact opposite yeah like i was <laughs> i was meant to be the scary one and Andy mm-hmm. was meant to be the one that you could just, hey, buddy, look at us. Right. But Jesse was always just the 20 year old. Yeah. <laughs> I was the 20. Well, because we were going to Rafifi. We were. And yeah. my, I was turning 21 in like three days. So yeah. uh, I was like, I was just already telling people I was 21 on account of being a child. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, to try to get into venues. And then I got, it was so, I got turned away. And it was like, uh, 
It, it was awful. I watched Sean. I stood on the street in my mind. It started raining. You know, yeah, probably, and I watched probably. Sean go into the venue. Everyone, everyone inside yeah, is all only raining directly above you. Yeah, everyone inside <laughs> is like. Well, um, it was New York, so a guy drove up in a limo, looked at you, and went rain, and it started raining. <laughs> right, right. Just Sean goes inside. Enough. I could. Uh, it was like it's a wonderful life. Like I could see people inside, like drinking like hot cocoa and laughing. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And your um, breath is fogging up the window. You have to wipe it off. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm standing yeah. outside of Rafifi. Um, I have to wear a hat that says I'm 20. <laughs> yeah, it was awful. It was an awful I time. Mean, I mean, I should have. You were. You definitely. Once you said you were twenty, I remember being like, "Oh yeah, you are." Cause you, like you looked like a like a hacky sack personified back then. I know. I know. <laughs> I did. Well, so, so here's the horrible thing with me is that I looked fifteen until I turned thirty, and then immediately looked forty. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like I never got. I, I never got to age like someone sh- I've never looked my age ever see I've always thought you looked always looked both 15 and 40 simultaneously well uh, no totally totally but that's because you have that that foresight you know that British <laughs> foresight but I mean I've, I looked way too young and now I just look like Tom Waits or something it's horrible <laughs> it's horrible now <laughs> you, you look like Tom well, I mean Tom Waits is, that's a good look that's that a, is yeah, yeah it's a castable a- look that's such a like, John. I look terrible now. Like John Waters. Well, that, that I wouldn't want to look like John Waters. No offense to all the waterhead, out, the waterheads out there. But. Waterheads. That's offensive for a whole different reason. I love it. <laughs> Man, his fans, his fan base has got to get a new name. That's yeah. It's, right. it's horrible. But no. I, well, of course you you think Tom Waits looks good because I remember your. If if we're gonna make fun of me being twenty, I remember yeah. your famous pork pie hat face. Oh, buddy. buddy! I remember. Buddy, I remember buddy. the face. Well, so, so I'm, I'm I'm currently in Portland, actually now, right now, um, headlining Helium Comedy Club this weekend for New Year's Eve, right? And oh, the is first this, is time this, if this episode drops in, oh, it's probably sold out, right? It's selling. It's selling well. So yes, if it drops in time, come get tickets. But I'll, I'll was, get it out today. Yep. I, when I um when one of the staff reminded me that ten years ago. Uh, last weekend, ten years ago, was the first time I ever came to this club, and they were also were like, "Yeah, you, you still have that hat." And I remember being like, <laughs> "Oh, what hat?" And then I remembered, like, "Oh, fuck, dude, yeah." I, there was a good year where I like steadily rocked a pork pie. Well, so here's here's yeah. what I find as a comedian because I've I've hit the same thing, is that you if you're a comic, unlike any other field, you right. can't just get away with a hat face. Oh, no, dude. You know you what can't. I mean? You can't do it. People will remind you forever. It'll be 30 years later. And so, is you still doing a beanie thing? Like, no. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. I, help I, you I, if it's in a headshot as well. Yeah. Oh, a, bro. Like a grainy photo that's still on the comedy club that you headlined 10 years earlier. I mean, it's actually what's very interesting is how hyper judgmental comedians get about aesthetics, in, in period. Like, if you just decide, like like Jay Okerson likes to wear fingerless gloves, he just likes to wear them, and people still don't let. And like, and if you wear a pair of fingerless gloves, which you know I occasionally do because it's cold where I live, people sure. will be like, "Oh, so the new you're Jay Okerson now?" And I'm like, "I don't. Uh, does he have the patent on fingerless <laughs> gloves? Because th- if we're going by that rationale, I also use a microphone just like him when I'm on <laughs> right. stage. Am I right. stealing that? Am I stealing the microphone?" And but I've noticed like yeah whenever you get a haircut comedians are like whoa with going for the mohawk huh and you're like maybe I am I I never I don't have a mohawk by the way currently but also like I, I like that you're, you're defending the fingerless gloves because of the practicality when the one part of the finger it doesn't cover is like the, the part that gets the most cold yeah but dude when you use your phone or when you pick your butt as much as I do you know what I mean you want <laughs> those fingertips. Yeah. 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 Is there an opposite? Are there just, you know what Fingerful? I mean? Like a, just sort of finger beanies? Just you wear five of them on thimbles? Beanies. Yeah, just the tips. I you guarantee know? that exists. I just don't, couldn't tell you where to get them. For, L.L. Bean. I'm, I'm going to say it. L.L. Bean <laughs> makes yeah, fingertip got, club. Makes finger every, beanies. If that doesn't exist, there. I don't think, wait, Jesse, you're in Nashville, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, see, fuck, not enough. The, te- the temperature's not... Cool. I, I guess it's on me to go ahead and try this one out, huh? To see yeah, if we you're just... a, you're the only yeah, person in the cold does. place right now. Yeah. Well, how you grew up in Louisiana, so how does it ever get cold there? 
Well, actually, uh, last week was the coldest it's ever been on record. I think same, same with Nashville. It was like n- yeah. negative twenty with wind chill and shit. Now that's cool. yeah. wow. It was awful. How how cold was it in Louisiana? It was only like maybe twenty degrees, but n- no negative. But uh, that is definitely in New Orleans. That's fucking. You yeah. have to. It, that is, if, by the way, twenty Fahrenheit, which is below zero in Celsius. That's below freezing. Right. Oh yeah, sure, sure. And like, uh, you have to run the water a little bit, or the pipes freeze. That's how yeah. unprepared the South is for cold weather. Yep. Um, I mean, it's kind of funny when I remember this. This was maybe fuck eight years ago, but I was going to uh, to Atlanta, and there had just been like a quote unquote snowstorm, which in which they got less than an inch of actual snow in the city of Atlanta. But when I got there, I drove in from uh, Nashville. Uh, there were like cars just abandoned on side the road. And, oh, like, Britain's the same. Yeah, it's, really? Brit- Britain's like that if it rains. Yeah, and it snows at least once a year. And the country, it's like when it rains in LA, same deal. Like it's not an unknown what? thing to happen, but the whole place can't cope. Britain, I like, yeah, like an inch and a half of, of snow and it'll be like... We we don't we didn't have enough grit. We didn't have enough salt. I don't know what happened, but we just didn't have enough. And you're like, oh, for this thing that happens literally every year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. I would have lost money on that bet. I would have bet that it snows in London just regularly or England. No, no. It's like look, UK is kind of because it's a little island because it's surrounded by water. It's uh, it never gets that hot. Never gets that cold. It's kind of we've it's been kind of similar to. It's like San Francisco weather. Yeah, we've been had by all the Dickens movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's so Christmassy, and it's what? always fucking snowing. Yeah, it's actually and... like the the bookmakers take bets on whether it'll be a white Christmas, and more often than not, it isn't. Right, like whether there'll be snow on Christmas Day, it generally isn't. Well, I would say more than yeah. If it's, I mean, like the the odds would be insanely in the favor of the person betting for non if it's maybe one snowfall a year, right? Uh, no, it's so like one or two snowfalls oh. a year normally. But so, like in a Christmas Carol, that should have been a bigger story than the ghost visits. <laughs> right, like, that should be crazy. Like, wait, so it's also it's snowing. What the fuck? Like, I, wait, so it's snowing in the past, the present, and the future. That's three snowfalls. Jesus Christ! Right about this. Yeah. Uh, here we go. The uh, the last white, um, the most recent time the UK alone had a white Christmas was so that's happened if it snows anywhere in the UK on Christmas Day. So that's including, like, Highlands of Scotland. So that has oh, happened okay. more often. So that was, like, happened in 2021, 2020, then 2020, 2017 before that. Um, but London hasn't seen a white Christmas in over 20 years. It's technically only had six white Christmases since 1960. Dude, do you, uh, wait, to, to, to Jesse's point earlier, this might have been before we were recording, but... Um, do, is it Father Christmas in England? Uh, oh, it's yeah. Father Christmas or Santa Claus, but yes, Father Christmas is. Oh no! What we were talking about, I think, before recording was the the festive season. All right, yes, because you said we're doing a festive episode, and and I I have questions because uh, you know I'll watch that I'll watch that Bake Off, which I have a separate uh, the British Bake Off, which I have a separate beef with, but doesn't matter. So I'll Damn. watch it and. Um, so they always do holiday episodes they do two special holiday episodes and they have like a but it's always two and it's like a Christmas episode where it's like make some cookies that look like a Christmas tree and do all that and then it's a festive episode celebrating the festive season it's still special food you know it's like make a Stalin bread or something I don't know but it's uh, what's, what's going on with the festive versus Christmas I'm going I to ask you, my don't. Jewish friend Matt Kirshen. <laughs> I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, mean, I like maybe they're using festive to refer to the whole time, the whole era. But uh, yeah, I don't. Nah. Look, I, uh, war on Christmas is what it is, boys. There you so, go, motherfucker. Uh, war on Christmas. <laughs> to me, they were they were interchangeable. So I don't know. This is what happens when you vote Democrat, motherfucker. <laughs> Everything comes interchangeable. Festivities, genders. Fucking all that shit, man. Festivity. <laughs> Can't even revel anymore. You f- I feel unsafe reveling. Yeah. <laughs> he likes to revel. This guy likes to revel. I That's New York, baby. That's- <laughs> yeah. A guy pulls up and says, hey, Hanukkah, revel. Dude, go. <laughs> Here's a Carnegie fucking. Carnegie Hall, now. <laughs> Here's a kosher slice. Carnegie, let's go. 
Um, <laughs> uh, what you guys? Did you guys have a good holiday? You have a good festive season? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. All right. Yeah, we had we, we we had a nice time. We had we had a couple of friends around on Christmas morning, and then and then went to a party hosted by friend of the show Robert Buscemi and okay. his lovely wife Janet. Oh yeah. All Speaking right. of hats, right? Those those Buscemi yeah, oh, still yeah. rock the the, the, the he, yeah they, they they rock all manner of clothing. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I, I, Christmas. I've 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 been to other Christmases before where. The, it, like the gift unwrapping is such a process where yeah. like everybody has to watch each person individually unwrap That's, the I gift. It. I hate that. You're right. And then there's like a story <laughs> about how the gift was bought and et cetera. Whereas my family, it's a straight up pure chaos. It's like anarchy. It's just gifts are gifts are being opened. And if you open one that's like a special, a, a especially cool, you get everyone's attention, thank the person, or you just do it one on one. Like, oh, thanks, man. And then roll through, and then it's fifteen minutes. Everybody's done, and it's just a wrapping paper everywhere, and people retire to the garage to get shit faced. I love it. This, <laughs> I've you never know? experienced that to this day. I mean, my parents. I think their reasoning was sort of sound for pacing it out because, yeah, it, it would have been over. Fifteen minutes is generous. It would have been over in three minutes. Yeah. So it would be one at a time, just so we get some like they get some bang for their buck. Uh, but we still do it. I guess now I was back home and I have nephews, so it's like maybe it's just. For that reason, but it's still, there's a round where everybody's holding, someone will start passing them out, everyone's holding one, then it's like, we go around the circle and everyone opens one at a time, and it's like, we don't, I don't have to do this, but. Uh, hmm. I could say this, I think I'm, uh, I'm uh, uh, people, I'm, I'm misunderstood when it comes to gift, gift giving, because I refuse to, like those gifter type sites where you just put shit that you want, which is basically, you're just being like, oh, hey, people, uh, I don't need shit, really. I'm fine. But here's just a shopping. Here's things I wish I had. Go get them for me. I kind of hate that. Like, I prefer the original idea of gift giving where it's like, hey, I'm thinking about you, person in my life, and I think you would like this thing, this this article of clothing, this this pork pie hat, this statue, this, right. this uh-huh. uh, vibrator, this whatever, it, uh, this morning after pill. Take it. Um, it's pork pork pie vibrator, yeah, exactly. Sure, whatever it is, and I'm just giving it to you, and it's going to be kind of a shock or surprise when you open it. Like a, that's how I like. It. I I kind of hate it if I'm like bitching about having a oh man, my cell phone case sucks, and then a week later someone's like oh cell phone case for your birthday. I'm like oh, but you knew I needed that. That's kind of lame, and it also but, took all responsibility away from you as the gift buyer. Wait, but yeah. I, I kind of like that one where it shows they were paying attention. You didn't write down an Amazon wish list and send them a link. Okay, or something. maybe you're yeah. right there, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I tell you, can I tell you guys something? This, this I still think about this and get fucking furious because it's like one of those things that just it triggers everything about me. My hatred of pseudoscience of all of it. I I had a, a girlfriend for a while. It's crazy, right? So I had a girlfriend for a while, and uh, this is in L.A. You you guys all most of you guys knew her and met her and stuff. She was around and. Um, she made a vision board, right? Now we're no, okay. we're no longer together. I'm not into vision board people. She made she made a vision board, and uh, it had a leather jacket on it. <laughs> right. Which I don't know if that's how it works, you know. But uh, I was like talking to her about. It. I was like, "What? What's? Wait, you made a vision board?" And uh, I'm like, "How does that work? What is that even?" You know. And uh, she was explaining the concept of it, which is you know like not a thing, and um, it had a leather jacket on it. So anyway, uh, her birthday rolls around or something. I bought her a leather jacket and she was claiming that the vision board works. She's like, see, it works. I put it out in the universe. You know what I'm like? No, yeah, it doesn't Jesus. fucking work. It's you, uh, you, you just made a, you pasted some stuff and hung it in your kitchen. And presumably I'm the only person coming over. I don't know. And now it's just some shit you wanted. It's not how any of that works. I just want to, as she's opening it, I want to hear her thank you for manifesting that. Yeah. So it's like I got no credit. Like the universe yeah. gave her that. You know, it's like I spent a lot of money on this jacket. Right, and right. It, But it's like the universe gave it to her. And I was, everything about it made me furious. I don't, uh, it was so weird, man. I don't know. No, I mean, dude, I, yeah, like that. I, also, I. That sort, you know what that is? That's like performers, and I've seen not just comedians do this. Tell the audience, do like a, all right, everyone, stand at the end of this. You're all going to stand up, standing ovation. It's going to be amazing, and they do a thing, and then the audience, as they were just kind of told, 
stands up and gives them the, and then later that person's like yep getting standing ovations left and right i'm being very oh, specific God. about one person Brutal. But, um, but that kind of shit where you're like yeah but it's not God. the same if you ask someone to do it <laughs> you know right. what i mean that's right. like, the most pathetic yeah yeah Right, like but it's not even. I, I would have rather it was a list. These are th- physical possessions I would like to own. That would have made me feel better than I manifested a leather jacket in my. <laughs> like no, you no, you didn't. You, you no, you fucking didn't. And I still sometimes at like you know at three a.m. when you're trying to sleep, I get mad about it, and then I have to like pace around for a minute. <laughs> Oh, bro, that's what 5 a.m. That's what 4 a.m. showers are for, man. You know? The amount of cold showers that jacket still caused a decade yeah. later. I mean, hey, good for your circulation, though. So here you got circle of life right there, brother. Hey, All that's right? showering, baby. That's it. Yeah, you get in there. That, you... that, that shit, those cold showers are actually stopping you from needing a leather jacket of your own. You're I know. Gonna be, <laughs> you're so much hardier than you, than you would have been otherwise. <laughs> I know, but but that's what I'm saying about the, the, the hat phase and stuff is like, I'd like a leather jacket, but you can't just start doing that as a comic. You'll get roasted oh, yeah, immediately yeah. if you if you just show up and now you're a leather jacket guy. Oh, no, you can wear it to the gig, but if you wear it on stage, then that's only a short step away from like your poster having gaffer tape across your mouth. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's... I'm censoring myself over here, yeah. <laughs> I mean, sometimes it's... It's like like last year, and I actually speaking of leather jackets, I got there was a leather jacket I got at a thrift store, one that was like fit perfectly, awesome, and it was at in Denver last year, and I wore it with like a black beanie and like a black t shirt. I, I just wasn't, I just all black. And I showed up, and someone was like, uh, "Are you a member of the Black Panthers now?" And I was like, <laughs> "Yep, I'm a, yep." Immediately put in check. Thank you. <laughs> God. There was uh, a comic who submitted to Bridgetown. Um, probably oh, 10 buddy. years ago and I, I wish there were some way you could in a non-mean way just compile the greatest hits of some of those submissions you know because like think there is a mean way i think you're just putting it out there brother that's all <laughs> <laughs> this was before i mean eventually we were just like okay in the application just send us a, a link to the youtube but initially we had people send in dvds i forgot the logic because youtube existed for the entirety of <laughs> I, I think some people just only had DVDs of, I don't know, or maybe we wanted to make it a little bit harder to submit because really we wanted the numbers to be low. It wasn't like a cash grab. It was like, this is a pain in the ass. I'd rather oh, have sure. no one do this. But Well, that was my favorite time living together. Uh, oh, I forgot about. <laughs> was submission week when it's like we were just, we'd, we'd HDMI cable it to the big TV oh, and just sit in there and watch that. submissions. And it was every year I was like, oh man, submission time. Me and Andy are going to watch some. So this is great. this is the this is the first actual emotional sense of nostalgia I've had for the festival in so long. Wow. That was fun. Like that, yeah. it was so annoying and a lot of work, but like yeah, ridiculous. The stuff. So one of the guys I was thinking of was a guy who wore this. Um, it's sort of like a Sergeant Pepper jacket, just some like uh, needlessly adorned jacket. A stupid. If someone was wearing it in public, you would make fun of them. Um, right. So he wears that in his submission and his whole five minutes is making fun of the jacket he chose to put on oh, <laughs> as if yeah, it's like dude. a physical disability where he's like, I'm just, you know, I want to show you that I can make fun of myself. Like, no, that wow. isn't cerebral palsy. That's a jacket you bought and put on. You could just not wear it <laughs> instead of being like, what is this? Who do I think I am? Like, I don't know. Who do you think you are? Why are you wearing it? <laughs> and also, if we accept you based on this submission, are you going to? Are we supposed to presume you wear that jacket to all the sets we book you on? Like, what's this is the act you want to show us you, you do when you perform stand up? I mean, that's kind of funny if you if you book him and he just shows up without the jacket. You're like, holy fuck! <laughs> yeah, but, he's got, it's but it's like no matter what he's wearing, he's like this T-shirt, right? Who do I think I am? No, I, I, I would love for him to forget the jacket and then still <laughs> still do the material. <laughs> still and, and it makes no sense to anybody. No. But I like the idea there that he has, like, be... Bowie phases. Now he's thin white Duke because he's got a different dumb jacket every time. Oh, that's funny. There used to be a comic, like, like a guy I started out with when we were doing the, like, the open mics, who would go around with a kitchen sink and Fuck. go on stage with it. And I, I can't remember the exact... You could, he you owns can... Twitter now, this guy. It's crazy. Yeah, exactly. You, you, could, you can deconstruct the joke. Yeah, I in fact, you never forget, forget what I forgot or what I remembered. Or I can't remember how... But anyway... That's the joke. His opening joke was about packing everything but the kitchen sink, and he had to carry the sink with him to every gig. And then oh one night it got stolen, so he <laughs> lost his opener. <laughs> dude, dude, like, 
my favorite open mic story I've ever heard, and unfor- and I didn't experience it firsthand. Was this? But it was this Australian comic told me about it, like at an open mic in Melbourne. That was like um, this one guy would show up every single week, and he'd sign up as Mick Dundee, which is already annoying when Americans do that to Australians. <laughs> but he was an Australian guy, sign up as Mick Dundee, and he'd go up and do just the most like vanilla middle of the road whatever set and he does this for like five or six weeks in a row same exact set so finally the the guys who run the mic at the end of one of them are like hey mate you welcome to come back next week but you gotta you gotta do something new up there man you know you're doing the same stuff it's not really working so he's like okay and he shows up the next week dressed in full zombie regalia just like full (laughs) makeup tattered clothes and then goes on stage and does the exact same set but as a zombie (laughs) Oh yeah, God. and I and like the guy was telling it was me and Matt Bronger. He was telling this story to, and we were like, "God, dude, I think I think you guys got long con. Like, I think that guy might have actually been a genius. Like, <laughs> who was just like, I'm gonna go to this mic, I'm gonna keep doing this same bullshit set until someone says something, and that could be five weeks or five fucking years, doesn't matter. But the moment they do, the zombies coming out." <laughs> that sounds like a squid game thing where like billionaires are secretly betting on it. Yeah. Like yeah. how long he makes it before he has to quit doing this mic. Um, Sean, something we ask all of our guests. Yes. Um, and we have asked you this before, but uh, not for about over half a decade. Go for it. Sure. Yeah. Back when I was 20. Uh, is <laughs> is what, uh, What's your background in, in science, if you have any? Any classes you liked? Any, you know, did you have yourself a chemistry kit growing up? Have you, I think, uh, do you, you like stuff up staring in the woods with at, your friends? Do you like I, staring at the stars, the celestial, the celestial void? Hmm? So my my dad, I, I'm really into astrology. No, <laughs> <laughs> astrology and crystals, bro. These are the way. <laughs> my my dad is a fucking massive uh, astronomy guy. He's got telescopes and um, he's retired now. And he's retired. Was, was your dad excited yesterday? Which apparently was the. Uh, all the planets of the solar system were visible in the night sky together. Uh, gar- I guarantee he was. That's 100% his jam, right up his alley. Um, I think I might have said this last time we did one of these, but I, I did in high school in the 11th grade have a uh, – the only te- – Mr. Trigg. That's the only teacher I remember from high school, biology teacher. I remember day one, he walks up in front of the class. It gets kind of naturally quiet. It was um, when our school had transitioned away from chalkboards into those white dry erase markers. Oh, yeah. Right? He stands in front of the class. It gets quiet. You know, everybody's watching. He, right in front of everyone, jams his finger his nose, pulls out a fucking, like a nostril glacier, just a huge, <laughs> just, and smears it on the board, circles it, and then gives us the biological makeup of a booger. <laughs> and that was... Wow. The first lesson on the first day. And that was like my favorite class was biology. I mean, it's not science directly, but. Oh, yes, it is. What? Yes. Very much. I mean, it is. Yeah, it is science. science. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's not when you think when you think science and you think shuttles, space shuttles and laboratories and, you know. Uh, oh, no, that's a, that's 100 percent. That's that's I don't think that's even one of the sort of soft sciences where you're like, you know. We've we've had we've got geologist listeners who okay there you go yeah will will strongly advocate for geology and I think that's legit but then I think geographer geography is kind of like pushing it yeah what yeah, about yeah, but, I, but I think biology, 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 biology is the main one that's, yeah biology yeah. is definitely biology's one of the big three you don't have like free like freestyle rappers who are like let me tell you about science and you're like yeah. it's a different type of science buddy oh like, dropping science yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, okay yeah biology was yes biology is a science I'm. Of of all the sciences is one I'm more interested in. Yes. Yeah. No. It's uh, uh it's my favorite. That's my Did favorite. It, I didn't know this about you, Jesse. What? Well, what do you think it was? Well, I don't know. Yeah, biology is my favorite. Uh, my fa- and, my, and microbiology in particular is is uh, very much my favorite thing. But I it took a while because I had a I had a horrible. Um, I still resent them. I had horrible science teachers in school that never did anything cool. Uh, like, well, I had a teacher, um, this is, this is weird, but like, uh, you know, the first day and he, he just, we just got dry erase boards and he jacked off onto it. And I remember right, he, right, he, right. he drew a circle around it. Um, but then nothing happened. He just <laughs> yeah. left. He just he drew, it, drew a circle around it and said, yeah. no one touched that. Yeah. That's mine. <laughs> he goes, it's dry erase. Yeah. 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 Um, 
that's weird that he was able to, you know, like differentiate from the whiteboard the whiteness of the semen. But well, I think that was <laughs> that was sort of the lesson we lesson were supposed right? to take from it. You know, I guess um, it does have a pearl type hue. <laughs> Sure. You know, sure. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but it was, uh, yeah, it was interesting because, like, I, uh, I had horrible biology teachers that just, like, you know, straight from the book, like, they didn't want to be there. They were like a football teacher that also picked up a class, right. you know. Um, when it's like to me, it's crazy. It's the craziest thing. But you know what's so interesting about what you said because you know that's definitely a thing in most American schools where it's it's coaches. Who yeah. then have to teach a class like fuck? I got to learn about economics, fine, yeah. and where it should be the other way, where it's like, but but I but but I have a PhD in astrophysics. It's like, well, tough man, you got to learn, got to teach these kids how to shoot a basketball. Then you know, yeah. <laughs> treated well, like a meteorite school. going through a goddamn wormhole. All right, you know, yeah, yeah, it yeah. should be and that. There's way. there's your screenplay. There it is. Right, <laughs> I'm just. Nerdy. For some reason, I uh, wait. Is there a funny British person we could cast as a nerdy professor? Oh, uh, oh. do you guys know anyone? Oh, <laughs> mm. no. Well, I've got a cousin. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I had the same. It was like our assistant football coach had to teach to, uh, both drivers and sex ed, I think, and. Uh, and then uh, decades later, got outed uh, to catch a predator style for some b- bad stuff. The guy who taught us sex ed. Wow. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I, there's no great it's not ending. Like, no, to it's that not like story. funny. I just it's, I would uh, wonder if it's just whatever sneak into the sex ed. Like protection is very important. And then when you're you know when you're in the bushes, you need to uh, like <laughs> like if it just if he accidentally outed himself during class in some way. Well, yeah, there was my brother who was a teacher just sent me a TikTok of a comic who I, I, forgot, I can't, I've seen the face. It didn't have the name right on it, which is great when someone just puts up someone's clip and doesn't credit them. But yeah, he talked about a sex ed teacher at high school who one day decided he was going to teach the class how to put on a condom with a banana as he takes out the banana. He's like, I'm going to teach you this with a banana because I can't get hard on an empty stomach. Uh, <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry yeah, to quote well, someone else's joke there, but uh, no, but I, I did. Uh, yeah, my teacher did have did have some problems. Um, the, there's n- nothing, <laughs> nothing I, great I about mean, that. I feel Just like, like I feel oh, like back wow. in the day, like 20 years ago, if they were like, "All right, which one of you coaches want to teach sex ed?" They were like, "It was like a a fight. Like they'd have to like, uh, yeah. you know, throw throw a stick, throw one bat on the ground, and be like, only one of you, last one standing, gonna teach these kids how to fuck." And now, <laughs> I wonder if that's what sex ed was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, now you try, try not to come. You try not to. Yeah. <laughs> Put me in, coach. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Listen, you're going to fuck your wife for two to three pumps. Then you're going to get a nap. And if she's a good wife, when you wake up, there's a sandwich involved. That's all. It's that simple. Now let's get out there and do some wind sprints. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> but nowadays I imagine that when it's like, who's going to teach sex ed? No one shows up on that day. It's like I ain't. Don't put me in there with them kids, man. Oh yeah, you try anything to get out of it. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's a terrifying prospect having to teach sex ed. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I would, I'd. And, yeah, you know, if, if we could go back in time, we would have definitely not had this guy been. Well, we can't teaching. because it, because of the paradox, Andy. We can't. We can. But if, but if there's science involved, we can figure out how, guys. What are you talking? Podcast. What are you guys was, talking? No, no. There's a time travel paradox. It's not possible unless somebody came up with some sort of math. But it's it's never going to happen. Ah, uh-huh. well, listener, uh, keen eyed listener, <laughs> keen eared <laughs> listener, keen eyed listener, Justin Broad sent us a story from Science Alert. Uh, about a physicist who came up with math that shows paradox-free time travel is plausible. What? Um, what, are, what are you talking about? I'm Let's saying it. we've all seen we've all seen our Terminators, Donnie Darko's Back to the Futures, yeah. and you know that moving around in time creates a lot of problems for the fundamental rules of the universe. If you go back in time and stop your parents from meeting, how can you exist in order to go back in time in the first place? Right. But right. but, but yeah. this is the uh, head scratcher known as the grandfather paradox. But a few years ago, physics student Jermaine Tobar from the University of Queensland in Australia worked out how to square the numbers to make time travel viable without the paradoxes. Mm, okay. So 
classical dynamics says if you know the state of a system at a particular time, this can tell us the entire history of the system, said Tobar. However, Einstein's theory of general relativity predicts the existence of time loops or time travel, where an event can be both in the past and future of itself, theoretically turning the study of dynamics on its head. What the calculations show is that space-time can potentially adapt itself to avoid paradoxes. To use a topical example, imagine a time traveler journeying into the past to stop a disease from spreading. If the mission was successful, the time traveler would have no disease to go back in time to defeat. Tobar's work suggested that the disease would still escape some other way, through a different route or by a different method, removing the paradox. Whatever Wait, the time so traveler did... Oh, so this is just fate? It's just this guy is just talking about fate? It does sound like Final this Destination. Just final Destination? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Even if you escape the plane crash, like a, a, a ladder is going to fall over that'll trigger a wire that's going to slice you in two. So, you know, anyway, that's what my equation shows. Yeah. Right, right, well, right. I mean, I do want to believe that that it's in the translation from the hardcore math into this natural... <laughs> Wherever English. you try to travel to, Devon Sawa will be there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't avoid Devon Sawa. <laughs> We've tried. Yeah. <laughs> so it says here, um, Tobar's work isn't easy for non-mathematicians to dig into, but it looks at the influence of deterministic processes without any randomness on an arbitrary number of regions in the space-time continuum and demonstrates how both closed time-like curves, as predicted by Einstein, can fit in with the rules of free will and classical physics. The rules of free will? Do we even have that settled? What? Okay. Uh, the math checks out, and the results are the stuff of science fiction, said physicist Fabio Costa from the University of Queensland, who supervised the research, and looks a lot like Duncan uh, Trussell, if you guys are looking at this <laughs> article really with me. That. It's really yeah. thought it was him for a second. Uh, the research smoothed out the problem with another hypothesis, that time travel is possible, but that time travelers would be restricted in what they did to stop them creating a paradox. Already making rules, man. I don't I, like it's, it. It's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> In this model, time travelers have the freedom to do what they want, but paradoxes are not possible. And you can't feed them after midnight. Mm -hmm. You should keep them out of the light yep. and don't get them wet. Uh, while the numbers might work out, actually bending space and time to get into the past remains elusive. The time machines that scientists have devised so far are so high concept that for they, that they currently... That they currently only exist as calculations yeah. on a page. Okay, we might get there one day. Stephen Hawking certainly thought it was possible. And if we do, then this new research suggests we would be free to do whatever we wanted to the world in the past. It would readjust itself accordingly. To the same results. I guess, yeah. Try That's as you might the... to create a paradox, the events will always adjust themselves to avoid any inconsistencies, said Costa. The range of mathematical processes we discovered show that time travel with free will is logically possible in our universe without any paradox. I mean, is that free will, though, if anything that you're doing is being thwarted? I, I mean... Also, it's just funny that they just assert, obviously, we know free will is real, and we go from there. It's, right. so, it's definitely so the debatable. Way, the way this solves the grandfather paradox, I guess, is that if you go back in time, it you wouldn't be able to kill your grandfather. Something would prevent you. Right. Another but it's just like, time traveler, your grandfather, probably. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's there to defend his old self, which he also, according to some theories, can't touch your old self. So no chance for a hookup with yourself. Uh, I mean, God, it's just, it's so, I want to believe that this is just in the translation from the math to this article that it becomes so vague as to have me think it's bullshit and that the math is interesting and hard. Would, but Would you would you hook up with yourself if you went back in time, if it was possible? Because oh. I think I could do better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we got to, depending on how far back in time I'm talking, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. You know, oh, cause, yeah. Because then by that rationale, you know, I'm in my 40s now, but if I hook up with 17-year-old me, is that wrong? It's me. Ugh. You know what I mean? Right. Mm. You know? Right. Can you molest yourself? Mm. These are questions. Speaking of paradox, all right, I, I realize I'm surprised you're the one left standing after everyone's mind just got blown with that. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah, in the future, when we have figured out time travel, will there be these like really superficial narcissists who will only yeah. fuck who only fuck a, a younger version of themselves? But then that younger version doesn't want to fuck the older version of themselves. So it's I know that's crazy, dude. I mean, well, also, and and I mean, let me as Earthlings experience it. Um, time, it's not stored anywhere. Like it seems like once you experience time, it ceases to actually exist. Like. Every second, every minute you experience, once you've experienced it, it exists only if you've recorded it or documented it on a film or in your memory. So it's like, wouldn't time travel then 
be almost more like an inception thing where it's like you can really only do it in memory. Like if you... uh, I, I, I think science might actually disagree with that. I think that we are as three dimensional Right. Are, are you know the the way I, we I mean, exist? That was, a, that, I, I was fr- that was a question more than anything. I wasn't st- making no, no, that, I, like I, my belief. I, I don't know the math behind this, but I think there's an argument to be made that we are the you know we're, we're in three dimensions, and then we're just all stuck on this train car going forward in this fourth dimension, but um, right. of time. And I don't think it's totally inconceivable that that could be. That it, there's like, a track we could just reverse the. Well, the, when you get to the end points, like the. It, the you know the beginning and end of the universe if there is such a thing like at those points all of like space and time like the things that gravity does when you get to massive scales it literally warps space time it's not space right. and time it's space time like time is right. part of that so i don't think there's any i don't think you can prove that that there's anything special about the fact that we are stuck in this but does, moment that there could be geography- some other does geography come into play? Like if, I, like if I'm sitting here and I have a time machine right now mm-hmm. and I'm like, I am going to go back to a week ago, very same spot one week ago. Well, I'd be just in the middle of outer space. Earth wouldn't be here yet. But very good. Yes. Like where, but, where, is, where is absolute location if, if not relative to the Earth? Like, yeah. But if everything is tethered together, would that not be the case? Because then I would just be in the future if I were in space then. You know what I mean? Like, like, would you just be in the same location either way because of space time, or would it be? Does the space time itself? I'm, I know I'm wording this like a total idiot, but I promise. No, I thought, get it. No, I your thought it. is yeah, not idiotic. Sense. Like, like, uh, if I did, okay, I'm going to go to a week ago, same exact spot. Is a week ago in the same exact spot still the same exact spot? Because it has to be, and and. It, or if I'm teleported in the middle of outer space waiting on Earth, then I would just be in the future a week ago. So that's not how that would work. I don't know. But I've always like I've always just been like, well, time travel would be like you go back in time to kill Hitler or whatever. You'd just be like millions of miles away with no air. <laughs> you know, like you can't yeah. you just be like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> but even that, like, I don't know if there's any. And any um, astrophysicists listening, tell me, is there any way of defining what location means in just Well, that's space? what I mean. Because like, not, only, not only are we, like, um, we're orbiting the sun. The sun is orbiting the black hole in the middle of the Milky Way. So, like, we... Everything yeah, and the Milky Way system. itself is orbiting the universe. And yeah, so everything is... Everything what is, is the definition multiple. of location? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I don't Absolutely. know if there's any way to even say what an absolute location is. Like all location has to do with just like, well, what you, what, what's our what's our reference point? Probably our sun, for most things, you know. But like, other than that, but then, but yeah, but then, like you said, the sun itself is orbiting yeah. the galaxy, and then the so, galaxy itself is also mo- orbiting. There's no absolute location, is my also. Is my theory. If, anyone, yeah. if anyone does ever figure out actually how to do this, and they do decide to go back and kill Hitler, remember, you're also going to have to wipe out probably about two dozen. Nazis below him. Want to be Hitlers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. People always like kill Hitler, but it's like, yeah, if not if you kill him, there's still all the fuckers who are like on his side, like, well, we must do this now that the Fuhrer is gone. So you gotta wipe out, be prepared to kill at least twenty five people. Like, it's yeah, what if he the, what if he was the less lesser co- yeah. he could have been like the the lesser competent like there might have been a better Hitler in the wings, you know, who like everyone not to I know this is Godwin's law, but like the Trump DeSantis thing Oh, Trump's gone. Like, well, DeSantis is actually like a sort of more more adept politician with some of the same goals. Isn't that more terrifying than the idiot with uh, true wh- whose, also, whose goals would, don't align I'd with yours? I forget that time travel means you can go back to anywhere. So I didn't even consider just killing baby Hitler. I didn't even think about that. So I guess if that's the case, you just got to go for one. But it's a child, you know. Yeah, well, yeah, but it's just, it's still it's a baby Hitler, you know what I mean? But like, I, I think the thing is, uh, oh yeah, the, yeah, I mean, and also, also, you, you like, you really don't have to go as far as infanticide. Like, as I think you can just like go go nine months earlier and just ruin yep, their, the ruin their time sex life. Yeah, be, yeah, just like yeah. rent oh. the rent the apartment below them and just play loud music all the time it just really annoyed them <laughs> sure yeah. but according Plus, to this <laughs> according to this thing we just read that's what makes them fuck 
<laughs> they're they're, yeah. right. they're yeah. like yeah. super into it. The only yeah. reason they came is because of you got that tuba in that apartment below them. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's, but right. but I mean, the weird thing about the going back in time and killing Hitler thing is that uh, everyone that talks about that, it's like the the impression I get is that they're all just totally good with World War One. They're like, yep, that was a valid, <laughs> that yeah, was a yeah, valid yeah. thing that yeah. was obviously should have been fought and was very cool. Yeah, why don't like, we just go save f- Franz Ferdinand and like maybe that's going to fix everything, right? Well, of course, not that the would band. have prevented yeah. World War II. Like, like of course, you know. Yeah, I mean, what if like also just speaking of killing, like, what if someone goes back in time? It's not exact, so they get there when Hitler's like, you know, a one year old. And they're like, fuck, all right, I got to kill a one-year-old. Fine, I'm here to do this. And then they, and they like, kidnap him. And they're like, fuck, this is harder than I thought. All right, I'll kill him tomorrow. And it just becomes like a Dread Pirate Roberts thing where now Hitler's, like, 10, but you raised him <laughs> in, like, a different situation, and now he's not anti-Semitic. You know what I mean? So now you're like, oh, shit, you, just, you didn't kill Hitler. You, you raised him to be a better person. And and then Adolf Hitler become you know like a circus clown or something or like a but like the name, but again like yeah. like uh, like you were saying though that yeah. I think according to this theory the way the new way you raise him is actually going to turn him into Hitler the yeah, right. so now, no matter what not right, only is he right. still Hitler but now yeah. you're his dad right yeah. you're like, like you're yeah, like right. I'm I'm gonna be a really good dad you know what I mean yeah. like Christmas when he turns five like here's a model train set like fuck. Like, yeah. You can't. yeah, yeah, yeah. No matter what you do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. what have I done? I, I, yeah, I think like if if you went if you got him into art school, like there's a lot of things that would have just thrown that like just would have nudged that asteroid out of the way. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Right, like, right, right. but uh, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, I just think according to this, it's not possible. You either would have created it or been prevented from the murder. Damn. You know? if, yeah. 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 It's. So, hmm. well, who else can we go back and kill then? <laughs> right? Or, or say. I'm just trying to rem- hmm. Have you guys watched um, Love, Death, and Robots on Netflix? No. I have not, no. It's sort of like, remember Liquid Television? I mean, it's a, it's an animated anthology series it's a sci- with a sci-fi angle. They had like three seasons of it. So just shorts, like five, ten minute shorts. And I forgot there's one about going back and killing Hitler a bunch of different ways. I forgot if this is, this might be the plot they're describing is like, no matter what it all turns out, I got to go revisit it. But uh, yeah, go check out love, death and robots. It's actually pretty good. Like it's got a decent hit rate. I mean, no, I don't think there's any anthology shows that are all great. Like black mirror has got some duds, but um, it's a pretty interesting show. Is, is anyone else uh, having trouble hearing Andy? Or is it's, that it's kind of oh no. Funny. Was I yeah, muted? No, I am as well. Yeah. Uh, it's do it, no no it'll upload fine it's just doing that weird robot voice shit that it does sometimes uh, which, which, which I think sounds perfect when you're talking about like actual science stuff and suddenly like and then that what if yeah yep it's like, yeah oh. like da- Dalek voice yeah, yeah. yeah. is it still is it still no, Fox no, you're, ba- you're back to now. normal again now yeah yeah it's okay fine. well I mean I was talking about a show called Love Death and Robots yeah. and it didn't want to be talked about so the time the robots came back from the future to mess up my recording of it. So right, right, right. They don't want anyone. Nah, to know. but that—that's all robots could ever do. They couldn't do anything else. I think. Um, oh, they could, really? They couldn't. No, nah, they couldn't do anything productive or anything like that. You know, they're robots, man. You know, yeah. you don't think that maybe? Yeah. They, can't they could uh, check out your groceries at a super Walmart. Nah, couldn't do yeah, it. Yeah, no. Nah, what do you? What? No, nah, these robots are useless. Um, they, you don't no, think they, they could can't... look at check what? out water pipes? Maybe. What are you talking about? <laughs> you don't think that maybe maybe you could develop some uh, robots that could stop billions of liters of water from leaking? Uh, nah, uh, nah. Mm. They can only go back and so, mess some, up the some water. UK engineers, oh, no. according to this uh, little BBC article okay. that, that I just found. Oh, by the way, while we're talking about finding out articles, we do appreciate everyone who sends in articles. And last week we we did an ep- we did a story quite early because it came in in real time from the first person to send it in. So we didn't get to credit the seven other people who sent in the snakes have clitorises story. I don't Isn't... know why. Uh, I don't know why you thought that it might be a popular one with us, but for some reason, you guys really lent into that story. And yeah, did you guys yeah. not know this about snakes? <laughs> snakes have clits, man. Yeah, dude, who didn't know this? Jeez. Hey, wait a minute. You, you guys needed an article to figure that out. <laughs> Come on, dude. Throw up in the fucking. 
grow up in Louisiana, dude. It's for you practice on <laughs> so before you ever hook up with a chick, you practice on snake pussy, okay? <laughs> and then day day one of sex ed is just like, well, it's alligators day one. Wait, alligator clits. Listen, right? you then, go find you a go find you a reptile. You make a reptile come. You can make a woman scream. You know what I mean? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got football practice in five minutes, so let's get out there. <laughs> yeah, let's. <shoot>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, praise to God. All right, <laughs> hold on, let me take my limo. Wait, stop for a second. Yo, that's, get in. That's Shit. New York, baby. We got that's, some. Uh, that's New York sex ed, baby. <laughs> New York sex ed. We got some uh, hog nose clip for you to fucking slurp on. <laughs> I'm about to come a million liters from my pipe here. Nobody can stop it. Which leads me to this article, guys. Which leads me to this article. Uh, engineers have now developed miniature robots to patrol the pipe network, check for faults, and prevent leaks. Uh, they're called pipe bots, obviously. Um, sure. Sure. Yeah. Uh, they say that maintaining the network of, of pipes would be impossible without robotics. Wait, pipe bots? Pipe bots. Wait till that gets out. Wait till the kids get a hold of that one. I know. Yeah, it's gonna be that's gonna be a new slang. Like this guy over here is a real pipe bot. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, no. Ch chuggy pipe bot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, so the water industry body Water UK told BBC News that companies were already investing billions of dollars in leakage. Uh, a recent report pointed to a lack of investment by water companies. Uh, it named several that it said were letting down customers in the environment by not spending enough on improvements. So it talks about a bit of an, an old infrastructure issue here. Um, Water UK responded by saying that leakage was at its lowest level since privatization. There are wide, leaks are a widespread and complicated problem. Across the UK, hundreds of thousands of kilometers of pipe of varying age and in varying condition, like a Will Chamberlain over here, uh, they supply uh, millions of properties with water. Colin Day from Essex and Suffolk Water said, in this region alone, we look after more than 8,500 kilometers of pipe, and only about half the leaks in those pipes are visible, which means it's complicated to pinpoint where the rest are. Wasted water has been a particularly sensitive issue this year. According to Water UK, three companies uh, in the UK, that's Southeast Water, Southwest Water, and Yorkshire Water, who said, F fuck directions. We're going with a different name. Uh, <laughs> they still have localized house pipe bans in place following the summer drought. And amid the cost of living crisis, uh, the estimates are that 20% of customers in England and Wales struggle to pay their water bills. Uh, by the way, that's hose pipe bans. That's uh, that's you can't you can't spray oh, water pipe. in your garden. Yes, hose pipe. Mm. Did I say house pipe? You did. Now oh, I added a U there. I wanted to be extra British with it. Um, <laughs> I did. I added a U. So uh, in the last year, companies have reduced leakage by about six percent. Um. But the industry is committed to a government target of having the amount of water loss by 2050. So they have to adopt the latest technology. Uh, that includes special in-pipe cameras, satellite imaging, mm -hmm. thermal drone tech, high-tech probes, and artificial intelligence. So uh, some companies are already starting to use these robots over here, these pipe bots. They're miniature mobile robots with cameras for eyes and all-terrain legs. They're being developed in collaboration with the water industry to patrol the pipes and find cracks and take pictures of your butthole. Hey. Uh, Is that true? <laughs> that's what, you know, that's what I was thinking the whole time. I'm like, I know what this is leading to. Yeah, exactly. A, whole, yeah, new, a whole, whole new category on Pornhub. Yeah. I'm, just waiting for, I'm just waiting for a Ghoulies reboot. I just, wanna, I just want something popping out of my toilet in a horror movie. Yeah, man. I mean, stuff coming out of the toilet is underused, and it's always terrifying. Yeah, it's very underused in horror. I think. Um, yeah, everything these it's days. The one is place all... you can't you can't check. You can't you can't you, you need to go there. Mm hmm. Yep. Everything's all like folk horror now, and I'm ready for us to get out of it. I'm ready for us to get out of the folk horror phase we're in. You mean like Midsummer? What's folk horror? Yeah. Yeah, like okay. um. Uh, like Dru druids and uh, oh yeah, a <laughs> pagans. Oh yeah, yeah. A significant lack of electricity. It involves like something from the the land or something. Or right. uh, there's a lot of people dancing in circles. Yeah, it, it, okay. it, anything with like a um, earthen figurine, I'm bored of. You know what okay. I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. So it's like, Blair Witch, uh, exactly. Wicker Man. I'm, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Chestnut Man. 
I'm sick of it, man. Chestnut sick man? You're sick of Chestnut man? Yeah, Chestnut Man was uh, what was it called? The Chestnut Killer or something? It was a ism. It's on Netflix. Uh, I'm sick of it all. I'm sick of it. You know, <laughs> stop with the earthen figurines. All right. Uh, take- what's your take on Barbarian? I know we got to finish the story, but Barbarian's take- great, right? Yeah, it was fun. Fun romp. You know, it was fun. It was. And it was uh, Zach Kreger, whitest kids. Yeah, no, I know. How, I know. How crazy it was, is that? Yeah. Yeah. No, it was fun. It didn't chill me to the bone, you know? Oh, no, no, no. It didn't chill me. It was just super fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was a fun It was a fun movie. Um, it was a fun movie, and they could have gotten out of there sooner if they had some pipe bots. Hey, These right are, Damn. Yeah. Um, so th- this is a toy car-sized robot, and they move along the pipe taking pictures. They have a microphone to listen to the pipe. They're designed to make decisions about whether the pipe is likely to develop a fault or not. And then they come up through your toilet, mm-hmm. and drag you down. I mean, yep. do we do we need pipe? Like, the I, I know plumbing isn't perfect, but like it seems pretty. We got a handle on pipes. Well, there's a lot of lost water there, by the stats they're giving. Yeah, there's a. Uh, it says uh, AI intelligence specialist Professor Netta Cohen from the University of Leeds says the biggest challenge for pipe bots is communication. So it's a lot like a marriage. In well, you just got to learn to speak pipe. That's all. No yeah. big deal. <laughs> hey. You know? <laughs> I speak pipe. Over you know here. what I mean? Um. <laughs> <laughs> I speak pipe. You don't speak pipe? <laughs> um, Which sounds a lot like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it's that kind of pipe. I'm just doing the dripping sound. I don't know if it came through on the mic or not. Uh, underground, there's no GPS, so they'll communicate with each other at short ranges using sound or Wi-Fi. They'll, uh, they will deposit these little guys to go into the smaller pipes and collect them when they're done, explained Professor Cohen. We'll need a whole society of these robots to, <laughs> to work in these uh, kilometers of pipe. If you think about the state of our infrastructure, she added, it's so urgent to do something. It has implications not just for industry, but for our impact on the environment. The water pipes beneath our feet, said Professor Cohen, are some of the most inhospitable environments on Earth. We can't do this without robotics. Inhospitable. Yeah, yeah, she also s- says that they have all been programmed to love and fear man. Mm-hmm. Yep, they're not allowed to hurt us. Wait, they've been <laughs> yeah. programmed? Okay, I-, I like her. That's a nice touch. Nice little amuse on that dish. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, by the way, I think that Underground There's No GPS is the logline for the most boring alien sequel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In the pipes, no one can geolog- geotag your picture. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> no one can turn, tell you to turn left. <laughs> so one of the most inhospitable environments on earth. It's a, uh, it's hilarious. Like when you have, so like plumbers are just going to have robots with them now and stuff. And is, this is uh, funny. I, I was telling my parents about chat GPT cause this is all I talk about now, Sean. I'm sorry. You don't know. This is a chat GPT podcast now. Sure. I mean, um, and they hadn't heard about it. And I was like, Oh, 2023, get ready. Every job that isn't plumber, electrician, surgeon, if you aren't doing something physical, your job is in jeopardy if you aren't the best at it. And now plumber, even. The robot's coming for the plumbers. Dude, I mean, I can't wait. They're going to come for podcasts one day, too. Well, I mean, that's what I'm... With ChatGPT, literally, the people we thought were the last... Who were the people with, with, we thought were the safest jobs ten years ago might turn out to be the ones whose jobs are gone first. Like I was having it, my dad didn't believe any of this stuff, so I'm like, just tell me something to type into it. I had to write a Mitch Hedberg joke about Christmas that was pretty good. My dad was like, "What the fuck?" I'm like, yeah, yeah, it can already do comedy pretty well, and it's only been around for a month. And the one coming out next year is trained on 500 times more data. So, wow. yeah. yeah. It's it's weird. Like uh, some of the stuff with like a, a plumber showing up the robots and stuff is uh, a lot of this stuff. It's going to start coming down to like we keep throwing tech at it, throw tech at every job, but then it will still either not make it easier or take the same amount of time. Like uh, my my parents had a roofer over recently. They had a leak in the roof and they had a roofer over and he brought a drone. OK, I mean, that's, I can see the logic of that. Sure. But it took yeah. it took way longer than him just going up on the fucking roof. Right. You know what I mean? Like he had to figure out oh, the drone yeah, and then like, wait, yeah. wait for the wind. And he like kind of sucked at it and he's. You know, had all these problems with the Wi-Fi. It's like, dude, just file some FAA paperwork. Yeah, yeah just go yeah. up there on a fucking it ladder. fly it on a wedding. That was just not <laughs> right, good. Yeah. Right. Just go on the roof, you know? I mean, yeah, well, you know, I'm afraid, but I'm afraid of heights. Weird, I know, it's a weird uh, pos- position I've chosen. But, you know, I don't like heights. 
Roofs are high. I love roofs. I hate heights. Yeah, it's so weird. Why can't they just build a couple on the ground? Just a couple. You show me a f- ground roof, I'm a, you, uh, you'll see a happy guy. That's me. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I love that. Drones. I've always said that. I've always said that. <laughs> yeah. Who but hasn't heard me? Raise your hand if you never heard me say that. You know? Exactly. <laughs> no one's hands up. <laughs> That's roofing, baby. <laughs> um, well, guys, what do we uh, what do we what do we have here? We we should well, get one more story in, and then before get, our yeah, uh, let's get let's get one more story in, and then yeah. we'll get the uh, and then we'll do a bonus story for the Patreon patrons. But absolutely, of which, of which also, everyone should subscribe, of course. But uh, here is a little um, uh, story from Science Alert. A new analysis of dust retrieved from the moon suggests that water bound up in the lunar surface could originate with the sun. Water from the sun has been found on the moon, is the headline. It's a crazy headline. What? Hmm. More specifically, it could be the result of bombardment of hydrogen ions from the solar wind slamming into the lunar surface, interacting with mineral oxides and bonding with a dislodged oxygen. The result is water that could be hiding in the lunar region. What's this word? Regolith? I don't know. Regolith? Does it mean word I've not heard? King Kingstone? I, I have no idea. Yeah, I'm I'm googling this. I want to learn this new word. Uh, it is a region of loose, unconsolidated rock and dust that sits atop a layer of bedrock. On Earth, regolith includes soil, which is a biologically active medium and a key component in plant growth. Okay. So, oh, it comes from on... the rego. It comes from the Greek for rug or blanket, and lith is like stone mm-hmm. or whatever. Oh. Science and this or rock. This has implications for our understanding of the provenance and distribution of water on the moon, and may even be relevant to the our understanding of the origins of water on Earth. The moon looks like a pretty dry dust ball, but recent studies have found that there's a lot more water up there than anyone suspected. Obviously, it's not floating around as lakes and lagoons; it's bound up in the lunar regolith, possibly lurking as ice in permanently shadowed craters and sequestered in globules of volcanic glass. So this leads to questions, how much water is up there exactly, how is it distributed, and where has it come from? The lo- it actually says, where the heck did it come from, but I'm not sure I... we can believe that cuss word. Yeah. The last, the last question probably has multiple answers. Some could come from asteroid impacts, some from Earth. One possible source, though, is hardly the first thing that comes into mind when imagining cosmic rain clouds. The, the sun isn't exactly dripping with moisture, but its wind is certainly a reliable source of high-speed hydrogen ions. Evidence that 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 includes an analysis of of lunar dirt from the Apollo missions has previously raised the strong possibility that the solar wind is responsible for at least some of the moon's ingredients of water. Wow. I I actually had no idea that solar wind consisted of anything like... Physical. Yeah, I thought it was literally photon, like just electromagnetic energy, but not any hydrogen ion. I didn't think there was any actual atoms of anything... Yeah, I didn't know that either. Crazy. So I've learned two things in this article. Yeah, I, uh, I was just thinking it was ions as well. <laughs> I was I didn't know any of this shit. So wow, I'm I'm going to talk tonight at a bar after the show like I knew this the whole time. So, <laughs> strike up conversations like so solar wind guys, right? Ions? Did you know that? Yes, new hydrogen ions were in solar wind, right? right it wasn't just that, right? some <laughs> photons and some actual. <laughs> matter being transmitted i mean i do hang out at science bars so right but, <laughs> yeah yeah mixology yeah they always have right. the best stuff right mixology thank you yeah. thank you Andy. yeah yeah, yeah. where the bartenders are all wearing those white coats yeah, yeah that's how you know they're scientists yeah pork pie hats where do you think i got the idea you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh. wait so uh how does that hydrogen then get the oxygen to form the water on the moon i guess uh from the oxides so so this this team of researchers led by these chem- geochemists uh yushin zhu and heng chi tan of the chinese academy of sciences have found chemistry in grains retrieved by the changi 5 mission that further supports a solar source of lunar water i didn't know that china's had a uh, an unmanned craft that's gone to the moon and come back i'm not sure i knew that either i'm, I'm learning all sorts of things in the co- they've really buried the lead on this I mean, it's crazy that uh, anything about China wouldn't be something that we are all made <laughs> aware of as it happens. <laughs> God, sorry. Yeah, the COVID stuff is bonkers. Uh, uh, so here it goes. The f- it was the fifth lunar exploration mission of the Chinese Lunar Exploration Program, the China's first lunar sample return mission. Like its predecessors, it's named after the Chinese moon goddess Chang'e, and it collected 
around 61 ounces, that's uh, around 1.7 grams of lunar samples, <coughs> including from a core a meter deep and returned to the Earth. Wow. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so these guys, they studied these 17 grains. Uh, seven of them were olivine, one was pyroxene, one pagioclase, and five were glass. They were all in contrast to low latitude samples collected by Apollo and Luna um, from a mid latitude region of the moon and collected from the youngest known lunar volcanic basalt from the driest balsatic basement. Uh, this is the. We've had this problem with science alert before. There is horrible grammar in this. Mm-hmm. I, sh- I should say they were all contrasted to. They were all okay. in contrast to this, and then no end to that clause. Um, using Raman spectroscopy and energy dispersive X ray spectroscopy, they studied the chemical composition of these rims of these grains, the outer 100 nanometer shell of the grain that is most exposed to space weather and therefore most altered in comparison to the grain interior. And the majority of these rims showed a very high hydrogen concentration uh, compa- and very low deuterium to hy- slash hydrogen isotope ratios, which is consistent with the ratios of these elements found in the solar wind, suggesting that the solar wind slammed into the moon, depositing hydrogen on the lunar surface. I hate when there's a high deuterium hydrogen isotope ratio. Every day when I wake up and I'm just I'm making my coffee. And just... You just got to get used to it, man. It's the 21st yeah. century. Just know, progress. Man. You got to live with it. No, I know. Just but I'm new normal. Just because yeah. the old ratios are going, it doesn't mean that you're losing your country. It's just changed. Yeah, I'm just okay. glad that yeah. there's still low deuterium hydrogen isotope ratios out there somewhere, you know? If there's two things that keep Jesse Case up, it's the damn leather jacket he once had to buy <laughs> and an isotope ratio. Everybody the, knows this. Yeah. The thankless leather jacket. Yeah. And the isotope ratios. Hmm. That is so, like the worst version, like a gift of the Magi yeah. gone wrong, the leather jacket thing. <laughs> <laughs> so is, is this, um, this is weird though to me, I suppose, because this is like... Um, it's sort of burying the lead in that in the, they're just kind of being like, we figured out how to make water. You know? Yeah. Well, I don't but know. They're that saying that the that's... hydrogen that is the H2 in the H2O has come in large attempt from the sun. And they, they then they did some experiments, some actual experiments with the grains, where they, they right. ran some heat experiments to determine that the, uh, the grains can retain hydrogen after burial and also. They conducted simulations on the preservation of the hydrogen in the lunar soil at different temperatures, which reveal that the temperature plays a significant role in the implantation, migration, and outgassing of hydrogen on the moon, which implies a significant amount of solar wind-derived water could be retained at mid and high latitudes where the temperatures are cooler. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so can we use this for our base? Uh, by our, I mean the four of us when we have our moon base. Right. Can um, we drink this water? Is this accessible? What? How much of it is there? Give me the practical stuff for when I'm up there with you guys. Mm-hmm. In the base, yeah. I mean, th- this deuterium hydrogen isotope ratio looks good to me. <laughs> I would, I would happily <laughs> sip on this. <coughs> that, I, you know, I got a bit before this article. I, I had forgotten what we've discovered. Where I forgot that we definitely knew there was water on the moon. Did you guys know yeah. that? Yes. Okay. I, I, I guess I thought. Because we don't know for certain whether there is on Mars. We're pretty sure, or or do we know that Mars has water? I think we. I feel like we definitely know. Yes, the answer is right. Mars has water. Okay, I feel dumb now because I forgot which things are like. We're pretty sure. Yes, it, it, versus... it almost all exists as ice, but there is water on Mars. Okay, so these are not okay. Nothing. Nothing is new here except I'm dumb and forget which things we found. I kind of think when we do, not if, like when we find, I think we will find life. Like not super interesting life but you know something that but i i don't even think that's going to be a big like holy fuck everyone on earth's minds are blown i don't think it's even going to be that big of a thing i don't think it's going to cause anybody to reevaluate religious beliefs or anything because like no we'll find everything moss on a rock somewhere right and no one will give a shit (laughs) which is a bummer but i think that that's going to be true but it'll, yeah. be, but it'll be moss that can, like, you know, do your taxes in 10 seconds. Sure. It'll be and clear yeah. super How, dirty moss. Pipes. Yeah. yeah. And can, like, instantly generate uh, comedy specials. Speaking of which, yeah. Sean. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> uh, there it is. Uh, to, 
Tell, tell us where where you can find it and how yeah, you Yes, yeah, so if I it. wanted to watch a Sean Patton comedy special, what would I do? I, you can watch it on uh, Peacock. And if you don't have a Peacock, Peacock subscription, I'm pretty sure you can watch it for free, but there will be commercial breaks. But don't fret because I chose the commercial breaks. So it's not just going to be like the middle of a you know sentence. Oh, cut to a 15-second commercial. It's actually – there, there. I, 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 it was a painstaking process, but I chose them all so that it wouldn't completely disrupt the flow of the special. But um, yeah, so th- thirteen people. minutes in, you ro- you roll out a Casper mattress and say, "Guys, I got to take a little break here." Yeah, right, right. Yeah, it's <laughs> all stamps. dot com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. No, it was. Um, not gonna, I mean, we did the thing. We shot it without knowing at all where it was going to go. We just, I was eight hundred pound gorilla, came in, and. Uh, put up the money and they were super cool about which it. is a production company by production the way that's company. not just a yeah production company they do a lot of albums and now specials and uh i realized the name of the their you saying that makes me realize their the name of that company has an entirely different meaning in the uk if you're like an 800 pound gorilla oh that's a quite cheap gorilla that's i would have thought you had to spend four figures <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah that would be a lot more expensive. yeah that's yeah it's great value <laughs> yeah. but um yeah we shot it and then you know Michael Che, who's an awesome comedian, awesome human being, uh, just kind of came in and was like, "Hey, let me let me help you make this go somewhere good, and let me produce it." And he's, he's, you know, it was awesome of him to do. Uh, and then it ended up. And, and it's great. I've watched it. It's very, very good. Oh, thank it's you. Filmed in your you. Ho- home base uh, in yeah, New Orleans. Filmed in uh, at Tipitinas in New Orleans. Well, that was the thing for like years. Uh, any anytime I met with anyone who you know previous to 800 pound gorilla, when I would meet with someone who was like, you know, I met with, I met with a couple of people in the production world who you know were interested, and I was like, you know, I want to do my first one in New Orleans, and they would be like, okay, we got an idea for you. What if we build out a street like a like a stage on Bourbon Street, and the backdrop is just people partying, you know, right? <laughs> I'm like, no, that's what the fuck is wrong with you? Or they'd be like, what if you did the special on a Mardi Gras float during Mardi Gras? <laughs> you know, and you're just like out there. Like, well, what if we do it on a sound stage in LA, but we make it, but we put, you know, some New Orleans shit in the background. Dude, I mean, the amount, I, I don't know when and where along the way, some some directors of specials or producer specials are like, what if we do everything else except pay any mind to the actual performance that you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> and it's really fucking weird. But uh, 800 Pound Gorilla was very cool. They were just like, whatever you want to do. What do you want to do? It's your hometown. You do you. And I chose Tipitina's because it's like, if you know New Orleans, you know that venue. So it's like, hey, this is definitely filmed in New Orleans if you know the city. If not, it just looks like a really cool venue. So it's not like, you know, it's not me on stage with Mardi Gras beads, you know. Right, right, right. Like, and instead of a microphone, I got a pool boy. Right, and by the time I'm <laughs> done eating the pole boy, the special's over. It's like no. It's... <laughs> but I mean, show us your bits. Yeah, 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 exactly. I give the audience a bunch of beads, and they throw the beads when they really like the material. So yeah, they're throwing red beans and rice at you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know that that old classic uh, New Orleans trope. It's like watch yeah. out. That would actually, if someone was throwing red beans and rice at people, like that that hurts. It's hot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, yeah, let's uh, yeah. I mean, it's I, I it's I love it. I'm I'm very happy with it, and you know, uh, and Peacock's doing some interesting shit as well. So uh, it was good to get in with them. Um, you know, I'm looking so, forward mean, to watching it. Yeah. Thank you, thank you very much, Andy. Uh, yeah, w- watch it, watch it, and uh, and where else can they find you online? You're on you're on Twitter, uh, and I mean, I don't I don't really inter- I don't really tweet much, but I'm on at Instagram. I'm at Mr. Sean Patton. I'm also on TikTok. Which I don't, you know, it's it's that one's fun ish, but um, I think it's Sean Patton comedian. But I'm on go to me Sean dot com. I'm about to release some tour dates for January, February. Then I'm going on the road with David Cross for like March, April, and most of May. Um, nice, which is fun because he's, you know, I still have to pretend like I'm not blown away that he even knows my name. Right, that's know? so cool. And so he knows your name sometimes. <laughs> You know, he refers to me as just opening boy a lot, which is nice. I'll take it. <laughs> oh, 
opening, boy. Bring me another Miller. He's also British. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> He's been hamming it up for 20 years. But <laughs> so find, find Sean there. You can find us, probablyscience.com, uh, on Twitter, at probablyscience, individually, at Jesse Case, at Andy T. Wood, and at Matt Kirshen. Probablyscience at gmail.com is the email address for any questions, comments, clarifications, and send in stories you would like us to cover. And also on probablyscience.com is the links to all the stories we cover and our Patreon and PayPal uh, links. Thank you very much to everyone who helps out with that. We will do a bonus story for the Patreon people after this. But Sean, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you boys for having me, man. It's great to catch up with y'all and happy 2023, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, well, speaking of that, I think uh, in, in the Patreon episode, let's also do, we haven't done this in a while. Let's all uh, go through, uh, name some of our favorite shit from 2022. We used to do that every year, remember? Oh. oh yeah, and also I keep forgetting to say this, but um, uh, Seattle laughs, laughs comedy club in Seattle first weekend of February. Come and see me there. Word. Awesome. Bye. Happy Bye. New Year. Bye-bye. Bye bye. All right, later guys. Bye.